Lori. Boss, what are you doing in town so early this morning? Oh, Roy, I had to come in and pick up some supplies for a little family celebration we're having out at the place. Oh. Matter of fact, I was going to come by your place and invite you out. Well, fine. What's this celebration all about? Well, Adam's coming in on the noon stage from Greenfield. He just closed a big timber contract up there with two of the biggest contractors in the whole territory. Got a two-year contract. Is that right? Say, it'll be a great thing for the town, won't it? That Adam, he's getting to be quite the business man. Yeah, he sure is. Paul's mighty proud of him, too. You know, Roy, I wish I knew how he does it. That burn, it seems like everything old Adam turns his hand to just turns out smooth and perfect. Never a hitch. Yes, sir? Just seems like Adam ain't got no problems ever. Our troubles. Now, me, if I'd have been the one that Paul sent up there, there ain't no telling how much trouble I'd have got into before I got back. I know what you mean, Hoss, but uh, I believe you got to look at it this way. Adam may get a lot more things done than you, but he don't have nowhere near as interest in a life as you. Yeah. I reckon you could look at it like that at that. Well, I got to get this stuff out the hop sink. See you tonight, Roy. So long, Hoss. So long. Get up. Sheriff Mundy said to be sure this gets off on a Virginia City stage. Cyril, the Virginia City coach, passed through here over 20 minutes ago. Next one ain't till tomorrow afternoon. Oh, shoot. But these are special trial papers that had to get off today. Sheriff Mundy's gonna wring my neck. Well, Clyde will be stopping to rest the horses at Chambers Grove. If you cut over Pennant Peak, you might be able to catch him there. I better catch him. If I don't, I might just as well keep on riding right out of the territory. Stopping here for anything wrong? We always stop here to rest the horses. Oh, you can get out and stretch your legs if you've a mind to. <sighs> a thousand pardons, senor, for this inconvenience. We shall work fast so as not to delay you any longer than is necessary. <laughs> Very thoughtful of you. Oh, it is nothing, nothing at all. I got some old Ay, carambas. Juan, what is it? I don't know. Hear my words and mark me well, you miscreant blackguards. There'll be no banditry tolerated on these public highways. Juan, you see it too? See. Si. Prepare ye to defend yourself! Get the horses, quick! Full tilt! Yet! Ay, Chihuahua! Oh, just this. 
Santa. Ah, so justice and virtue triumph again. Yeah. Thank you for helping out. Nay, never thank me, lad. Such is the way of a knight. Defend the helpless. Bring justice to evildoers. Right all wrongs. Such as the vows I made when I took my knightly oath. I <laughs> see. Uh, pardon my curiosity, but what is all this about, yeah? Who are you, really? <laughs> Forsooth, you must be a stranger to this land. Everyone the length and breadth of Camelot knows the name of good King Arthur. King Arthur of the uh, Round Table. Verily the same. I see you had heard of me. Oh, yes, everybody has heard of you, <laughs> the uh, noble sire. <laughs> well, now, about what happened today, I just assume you didn't mention it to anyone. You see, the court gossips a delight in the ridicule of their king being unhorsed by common highwaymen. Never fear, sire. My lips are sealed. Mm-hmm. Verily, it took all 20 of them to do it, and they had to sneak up behind me at that. And nonetheless, I should not have been so careless as to allow them to outflank me. <laughs> Happens with the best of nights, sire. The heat of battle and all yeah, that, you know? Yes, precisely. <laughs> well, you'll be safe enough now, lad. I mustn't tarry. I must be off in pursuit of the brigands. Uh, sire, don't you think you've done enough? I mean, why don't we just notify the nearest sheriff and let him handle the bandits from here on? I mean, after all, there's only one of you and five, uh, twenty of them. Oh, lad, you cut me to the quick. Wouldst have me give up the pursuit merely because I'm outnumbered? Lance, never fear, I shall bring them to heel. Though no, the number be legion. Come, noble Gwendolyn. Fare you well. Yeah! Hold it right there, mister. I don't know what you're thinking, but if it's what I'm afraid it is, you're wrong. I didn't do that. Well, if you didn't shoot off that lock, what did you shoot? Well, now, if you give me a chance, I'll explain. You'll get your chance. <laughs> what happened, Clyde? Oh. 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 Ah. I don't know. I was... I was up checking harness and somebody hit me from behind. I didn't see a thing. Whereabouts was this fella? Well, he, he was back here stretching his legs. He was behind you, huh? Well, yeah. Look, if you'll just listen a minute, I, I can tell you the whole story. You save your story for Sheriff Munsey. I'm taking you back to Moore's Flats with me. Look, and it's going to take a heap of tall talking to explain your way out of this. But the fella... So he used your gun to shoot the lock off the strong box. Then what happened? Well, he, uh, he opened the box. But before he had a chance to take any of the money, uh, uh, well, I mean, while he was looking in the box, somebody rode up and scared him and the other bandits away. There wasn't nobody there but him and a the driver when I got there. Now, just a minute, Cyril. You let him tell his story. Uh, now, son, who was it that scared them away? Well, <laughs> it was a man. There wasn't no man there when I got there. Well, they had already left by the time you got there. You mean Cyril was a man that scared him off? 
Yeah. Yes, you see, they heard his horse coming and panicked and ran away. Better lock him up, Cyril. Now, wait, wait a minute. I am not a stagecoach robber. Now, I'm, I'm on my way to Virginia City from a business deal in Greenfield. Now, look at that. Those are timber contracts worth thousands of dollars. Now, there is a check for $2,000 in advance on the contract. Now, you just wire Sheriff Coffee in Virginia City, and he will vouch for everything I tell you. You know Roy Coffee? I've known him since I was a kid. He'll tell you. I'm no outlaw. All right. I'll get a wire off to Sheriff Coffee right away. We'll see what he has to say. Meantime, you better just stay right here in one of our cells, uh, just in case. You won't be able to get a stage for Virginia City until tomorrow now anyway, and, well, see, I'll save you the price of a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> Cyril? <laughs> Cyril? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Give me the Adam and stage. <laughs> well, I'm saying made a great big chocolate cake, Roy. You gonna be there? Ben, uh, I wouldn't look for Adam if I was you on the noon stage. Now, what do you mean? Well, he's been a little delayed. In fact, I just got this telegram from Sheriff Muncie over in Morris Flats. An old man that calls himself Adam Cartwright claims to know you. Can you vouch for him? Please forward a description of full particular, Sheriff Muncie. What's all this about? Well, I don't know for sure, but there's probably been some trouble over there and had him being a stranger and all. The sheriff is just holding him till he can check out his record. <laughs> you mean old, old Adam's done gone and got himself into some dumb trouble? <laughs> well, Adam probably ain't done nothing at all. It's just standard procedure in a case like this. As soon as Sheriff Muncie gets my reply, he'll turn Adam loose. He'll be able to get that stage out of there tomorrow afternoon. Uh, I'll put him in here sometime late tomorrow evening. Yeah. That cake sure is going to get stale before then, ain't it? Is that all you can think about at a time like this, cake? I was thinking about that chicken pot pie, too, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, I hope you had a good night's sleep, Mr. Cartwright. I received this telegram from Sheriff Coffee last night. He thinks mighty highly of you and your entire family. Well, now will you believe me? Well, I don't know, son. That was a mighty far-fetched alibi you gave me, and I'm convinced you know a lot more than you've told me. On the other hand, there were no other eyewitnesses, and Sheriff Coffee vouches so strongly for you, but... Uh, well, I just do wish that you would... Believe me, Sheriff. Anything more I might tell you about the holdup would only serve to confuse the issue. But, Mr. Now, Cartwright... it was a gang of five bandits, and that's all I can tell you. Yes, but can't you give... Sheriff, I just know you'll catch those outlaws.
Hey, what are... Oh, senor, how nice to see you again. Uh, just charming. Gwendolyn, all the world's a stage, and one man in his time plays many parts. Villains, did I slay, lad? Did you count them yet? Ten, twenty? I want you to stand right there <clears throat> and listen to me very carefully. We're all through playing Camelot. Now, I humored you last time and I ended up in jail. The sheriff thought that I was trying to rob the stagecoach. Ah, oh, but you assured him you didn't. And he let you go, knowing your word was your sacred bond. <laughs> so, verily, truth and justice always triumph in the end, lad. Yeah, well, now, look, here's what we're going to do, see? Uh, we're going to go back up there and pick up the strong box. Straight. And we're going to see about the stagecoach driving, and all three of us are going to ride back into Mars Flats and tell the sheriff exactly what happened. Absolutely unbent. Hmm? Would you put that thing down? You haven't listened to me at all. You haven't heard a word I said. Sounds what a temper. Yes, I have a temper. No, you not you, lad. I'm referring to the land. It's not a scratch on it. Look at that. The temper of Toledo Steel. Would you please stop babbling and listen I to me? I heard what you said. You want me to go with you to the sheriff? Well, I can't. If I let him capture me, that'll be the end of it. It'll be all over. They make me go back. Now, I must be off in pursuit of yon bandits. My knightly honor is at stake. Would stand between me and Miss Warren duty? Stand aside, knave. Look, I know you mean well, old fellow. But you are dangerous. Dangerous. To yourself and others. Of course I'm dangerous. I'm a veritable holy terror when I ride against evildoers. <laughs> My... I'm hearing exploits are known worldwide. And well, we can tell your exploits to the sheriff. Now, come on. No, I see it all now. You're in league with those bandits. You're trying to prevent me from wreaking my vengeance upon them. Truly, a bad spell must have been cast upon me. Sire, please. No more talk. Stand back. Arthur. Don't go after those bandits alone. Now, that tin suit will not stop bullets. Never fear, lad. 
Justice shall be my armor, and innocence my shield. Come, Gwendolyn. Arthur, come back here. You sure got a lot of guts, mister. You ain't too long on brains if you think you're gonna get away with this a, a second time. Well, let's not go through this again. I'm just lugging your box. Save it. Let's see how far your story gets with Sheriff Muncie this time. If I was trying to steal the strong box, why would I lug it back to the driver? My guess is that after he wrecked the coach, he's seen that he couldn't get away. So he brought the box back, and he cooked up his wild story just to cover himself. Now, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Makes just about as much sense as anything you've said, son. Twice in a row, a band of outlaws ride down on a stagecoach, knock out the driver, take down the strong box, shoot the lock off the box, and then they ride away without taking anything. And you say it's because something or somebody scared them off. But you won't tell me who or what. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> well, you ain't got nothing to lose, boy, because I ain't believed a thing you said so far. Now, son, why don't you just tell me the truth? I'm your friend. I I'm, I'm trying to help you. But if you insist on holding out on me, if you refuse to tell me the whole story, well, uh, you, know, you can see for yourself how, how guilty it makes you look. Now, boy, why don't you just tell me what really happened? Come on, son. You can trust me. All right. All right. You want to know what really happened, huh? The whole story. some wild stories in my time. That feller takes all the prizes. And he seemed so sincere, too. Perfectly serious about the whole thing. Just as though he believed everything he was telling us. Fear nothing, lad. Thy unjust incarceration has not escaped the notice of King Arthur. Am I glad to see you. <laughs> I'll have thee free in a nonce. All right, you stay right there and you can explain this whole thing to the sheriff. Sheriff, sheriff, come in here, quick! The sheriff mustn't see me. Sheriff! Sheriff, come in here, sheriff. There's somebody to see you. Arthur! Arthur! Arthur, come back here! Arthur, where are you? What is it? What's wrong? He was here, outside the window. Who was here? Arthur, King Arthur, he was outside here. Well, don't just stand there. Go get him. He can't move very fast and all that steel armor. Go out there and catch him. Now, now just calm down. Cyril, you run out there and see if you can find King Arthur. Now, everything's going to be all right. King Arthur? Well, what's he look like? <laughs> well, you, you can't miss him. He's the only knight in armor you'll find out there. I guarantee it. Go get him. Hurry. Go on, Cyril. Now, don't you worry. You just relax. Uh, we'll take care of everything. Well, why don't you lie down for a spell? I'll be right back. Yeah! <laughs> 
Uncle Arthur. Rubio. Cyril, you come back here and put that rifle up. But, but you told me to go out there and look for... I know what I told you. I was just trying to humor him, trying to settle him down. We got a real problem with that boy, Cyril. Why, he's as crazy as a jaybird. Well, ain't no doubt about that. I don't understand it. Sheriff Coffey spoke so highly of him, and most of the time he talks and acts like he's got good sense. But he's got a real thing about that King Arthur story of his. You know, he reminds me of my Uncle Cleve. One day, he talked and acted just like you were me. Next day, caught him out in a lake in a rowboat, going after ducks with a bullwhip. Hmm. Did he ever get over it? Yes, for several days, he went along just fine. Then one afternoon, he started making noise like a billy goat. Before we could catch him, he started running and butted his head clean through the barn wall. Oh, my. Never was the same after that. Hmm. Summer. He's gonna be butting his brains out, and he's gonna do it right here in your jail. Sheriff! Sheriff! Now, now, settle down, boy. Just settle down. You're gonna be all right. Where is that fool deputy of yours? Arthur's still out there. He just popped up in the window again. Well, I know he did, but he's he's gone now, and we ain't gonna let him bother you no more. Cyril! Why aren't you out there trying to catch him? What's wrong with you two? See what I mean, Sheriff? Why don't you just, just lie down and, and, and try to get some rest? What kind of a lunatic asylum is this anyway? Well, it'll have to do until we can get you to a real one. Cyril, you run down to the stagecoach office and you send a while off to Sheriff Coffee in Virginia City. You tell him what's happened here and you tell him to send that boy's next of kin here to claim him. Sheriff, Sheriff, come quick. There's a brawl broke out in the saloon. Looks like there might be some shooting. Oh, just nights like this, it makes me wish I could turn in my star. Be of stout heart, lad. Thy liberation is at hand. What are you doing? I've come to help you. Don't. I don't want any of your help. Just let them hang me. Or whatever it is they want to do with me. Nonsense! You'll be free in the wink of an eye. With all your might, go! <laughs> A slight miscalculation, lad, but I'll think of something else. <laughs> Stop that. 
Get out of here. I'm in enough trouble already. Come on, lad. You're free. Sire, I do not wish to escape. I like it here. I love it here, Arthur. But I have a plan, lad, that'll fix up everything. It may mean the end of King Arthur, but we'll go out in a blaze of glory. Come on, lad. Camelot awaits. <laughs> Now you get quiet, Sam. We got a mighty sick man in there. Where's this sick man you were talking about? Well, sir, you're looking at him. didn't get in yet, Pa. What do you mean? Look, Roy said that when Sheriff Munsey got that wire of identification, he'd be taking the afternoon stage out of Morris Flats. Yeah, well, he didn't, Paul. Me and Joe met the stage, and he wasn't on it. As a matter of fact, I got to pick some. I got to get Roy to send another wire, straighten this thing out once and for all. We already talked to Roy, Pa. He just got another telegram from Sheriff Munsey. Well, what's wrong now? Well, it seem, seems the sheriff wants us to come fetch at him. Fetch him? Well, what kind of nonsense is that? Well, well, Poet, it seems like Adam's been acting sort of peculiar-like. Peculiar? Now, what do you mean, peculiar? It, uh, it seems he's seeing things. Been seeing things? And what kind of things has he been seeing? What kind of things has he been seeing? Oh, I was telling him what, what kind of things he's been saying. Well, uh... Well, like knights in armor and such. Knights in armor? And Sheriff Munsey wired this? Well, I'm going to tell you something. We're going to fetch at him. And that Sheriff Munsey is going to be seeing things by the time I get there. I could... Ah, I could understand that... You might be seeing things. I can understand you seeing things. But I cannot believe that Adam sees things, not him. All right, let's go. Come on, let's go. Locked up inside that jail, and he escaped? Just like he floated through the cell bars, and, and the cell door wasn't even unlocked. Oh, come on, now that's impossible. Well, we told you, he's crazy. Ain't anybody tried to track him down? Uh, wasn't no point in trying to find his trail last night. I, I was just about to send Cyril out to round up some men for a search party when you came busting over. Well, you got yourself your search party right now, so let's get going. Uh, we'll head out for Pennant Peak. We can see all through the territory from there. And, oh, uh, uh, Cyril, you take care of the office. And Cyril, get on your feet! Arthur, if this is a wild goose chase you're taking me on, I'm going to get me a screwdriver and take you apart, piece by piece. Upon my oath, lad, I followed the villains and discovered their hideout last night. It was only by dint of sheer willpower I restrained myself from swooping down, capturing them single-handed. But I knew how much you'd want to share the glory of the event. So I went back for you. Why didn't you tell me this back at the jail? And have you tell that miserably inept sheriff? 
Of course, it's his job to capture bandits, not ours. Lad, wouldst forego the glory and the honor? I wouldst. And so would you. As soon as you show me where this hideout is, we're gonna get back to town and get the sheriff out here. Then I shall most certainly never tell you where it is. Arthur, as a king, you should know that courage should be tempered with caution at times. There's only two of us. And how many of them have you counted lately, hmm? 10, 20? Oh, never mind how many I count. Look, if I could show you a way that the two of us could overcome a whole army, would you help, huh? Oh, now it's an army, huh? Well, it's worth a look at least. Lad, you may win your golden spurs yet. Onward! Right. You sure that thin man is not around? I searched all over. He's nowhere to be seen. I hope so. For his sake. Vámonos, muchachos. Stop them. No. Well, we're going to go back to town and we'll have a posse out here waiting for them when they get back. Ah, you and that sheriff of yours. Why do you want him to have all the fun? I am through arguing with you. Now, come on. No. Arthur, I hate to use force, but since we only have one horse... Now, look, it. Glad. How do you know the sheriff will believe you? He hasn't in the past. I'll take my chances. Why don't we capture yon guard, and then we'll take him back with us as proof? No, that won't work. We don't know how long the others are gonna be gone. Now, if they come back before we can have a posse out here waiting for them, they're gonna see the guard missing, and they'll know something is wrong, and they'll head for the hills. No, Arthur, it just won't... Arthur, come back here! Arthur, you... King Arthur does approach! Thy castle is under siege, knave! Strike thy colors, lower the drawbridge, and yield! Mother mia! After him, Glendon! Full tilt! Charge! <laughs> The varmint was sturdier than I thought. <laughs> uh, you really did it this time, didn't you? By Jove, I did, didn't I? It was a lovely piece of work, if I do say so myself. <laughs> All right, Your Majesty. Uh, now, oh, you come. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now, go get your rope and let's tie him up while I figure out what we're going to do about the others when they get here. Don't worry about anything at all. I'll think of something. I hope not.
Well, not a sign down here. Anything up there? Not a trace. Turn it into a lifetime job. We're going to have to search out all them little canyons. Sheriff Muncy, your deputy told me I'd probably find you out this way. Ben, you mind if I join you? I got a stake in this, too. Hey, Pa, Sheriff Muncy, you better come quick. Did you find Adam? No, but there's a stage down the road that's been robbed about a quarter of a mile. I think the driver's hurt. Oh, he's going to be all right, I guess. Beginning to move around now. Uh, we can catch them bandits if we get right after them, and they could know something about your boy. Sheriff. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, now you make sure that he doesn't move around. You hear me? You folks stay right here. You'll be all right, and we'll be right back. Sheriff. But, Sheriff. Shh, wait, Sheriff. I want to ask you something. It'll have to wait for now, ma'am. But I only want to know if you... Sorry, miss. Three times. Throw down your guns and put up your hands. Or I'll pick you off one by one like fish in a barrel. By thunder, it works, lad! We got them! Yep! All 20 of them! Do, 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 do I see what I think I see? Citizens of Camelot, thy good King Arthur and his noble squire returned from battle with the blackguardly highwaymen subdued. Yea, verily, yea, forsooth, noble Arthur, thou dost surely speak a mouthful. Unless well, is one time, Adam's gonna have to do some fancy explaining to me. What's that? You tell me and we'll both know. Methinks I've been away at the Crusades too long. None of my loyal subjects seem to remember me. So there you are, Uncle Leo. Do you realize I've been looking for you for ten days? <laughs> uh, Phoebe, my pet. Uh, well, uh, uh, how, how lovely to see you. What brings you all the way out here? What brings me out here? I've been worried sick about you, Uncle Leo. I should have known this would happen the day you lugged that armor home from the antique store. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> how did you find me? It wasn't difficult to follow your trail. When I came through Dawson City, the people there still hadn't recovered from your little visit. Half of them thought they'd seen a ghost, and the other half thought they'd gone crazy. Well, it's all over now. You're coming home with me before you get into any more trouble. So, there we were, just Adam and I against a veritable legion of outlaws. We knew the situation was desperate, and we knew that only we could handle the job. Well, sir, let me tell you... Poor darling. He worked in a bank all of his life and hated it. He said his soul was dying for want of some excitement in life. He spent all of his time reading adventure books. Then after Aunt Emma died, he decided to quit reading and go find some adventure on his own. He didn't want to live out his old age without ever having known any real thrills or excitement. Uh, he, he's a romantic old character, all right. Does he do this sort of thing often? Well, up until now, his adventures had all been make-believe. Well, he'd go off for a day or two by himself. He'd come back with all manner of wild stories that he'd imagined. After this last outing of his, though, I'm really worried about him. He keeps this sort of thing up. Adam, oh, we did have a time, didn't we? And it isn't an experience that I would care to repeat anytime soon. Well, frankly, lad, neither would I. 
But you know, for the first time in my life, I really lived. Oh, the thrills, the danger, the excitement, the chase, the, the intoxicating drama of combat. Oh, I wouldn't want to do it again, mind you. But the memories, lad. <laughs> the memories I'll have for the rest of my life. Are you going to be content with those memories or stop worrying your poor little niece here with all your disappearing? I promise, my dear, no more running away. And King Arthur's word is his sacred bond. Thank you, Adam, Mr. Cartwright, for all you've done. Stage is ready to leave, Uncle Leo. We have to go. Very well, my dear. Well, gentlemen, bye-bye. Go on, dear. Bye. Take Thank care of yourself. All right, in you go. Oh, I almost forgot one more thing. Adam, come here. For gallant and meritorious service, and for an understanding and sympathetic heart, King Arthur doth bestow upon thee the noble rank of knight. I dub thee Sir Adam. Goodbye, King Arthur. Hail and farewell. <laughs> Charge! <laughs> Peasants.